Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss some numerical of critical speed of single rotor. So the question says that the rotor has a mass of 12 kg and it is mounted midway on a 24 mm diameter horizontal shaft which is supported at ends by two bearings that means the shaft is actually a simply supported shaft on the bearings and the mass of the rotor is acti acting at the midway so we can consider that the mass of rotor is acting like this right the bearings are 1 meter apart so the length of bearings is given as 1 meter the length sorry the length of the shaft is given 1 meter and the shaft rotates at 2400 rpm if the center of mass of rotor is 0.11 mm up away from the geometric center of the rotor Due to some defects, find the amplitude of steady state vibration and dynamic force transmitted to bearings. So the question already says that the center of mass is not lying with the geometric center and the center of mass is away, how much away? 0.11 away from the mm away from the geometric center of rotor. Right? So initially what happens because of this E, there will be some more deflection taking place in the system. And this centrifugal force because of this eccentricity will cause more deflection. So the new centrifugal force, the deflection plus eccentricity will create centrifugal force in such a way that it becomes equal to the resisting force of the shaft and it creates the equilibrium in the system. So we write all the data that is given, mass of the rotor, the length of the shaft, E is given, modulus of elasticity. Eccentricity small e is given, the diameter of the shaft is given. So the moment of inertia of shaft is pi by 64 d4, right? d raised to the power 4. So you place the value of d and this is the value of i that we get. n is given in the question which is 2400 rpm. So we can calculate omega which is 2 pi n upon 60. Now in the question it is also mentioned that the shaft is simply supported on bearings so in case of simply supported shaft the maximum deflection at the center is given by the formula mgl cube upon 48 ei and this derivation we have done in earlier semester so we will not get into the details of this derivation so we'll just go with the formula so we know all the values m g l e and i all the values are known we place the values and this is the maximum deflection that can take place in this system at the center of the shaft. Now, we want to calculate the natural frequency of the system. So, what is the natural frequency? It is given by omega n which is equal to under root s the spring stiffness upon m which is the mass of the sorry s is the shaft stiffness now the spring stiffness upon mass which is the mass of the rotor and this natural frequency is also equal to under root g upon delta right because it uh, resembles the resonance condition so it is also equal to under root g upon delta delta we have already calculated g is known so the natural frequency is 114.2 radian per second and the rotational speed is 251.3 radian per second. So the we can the first thing that we'll observe is omega is greater than omega n. Now to find the amplitude of the deflection which occurs because of the centrifugal force produced by eccentricity, which tries to bend the shaft in this direction, in the direction of eccentricity, is given by this formula. This we have already derived, which is equal to e upon omega n upon omega whole square minus 1. So we place all the values and this is the value of y that we get which is minus 0.139 mm. Now what does this minus sign denotes? This minus sign denotes that the direction of e and y they are opposite. That means the shaft it deflects in the opposite direction. It is not in the direction of e. So if this is the direction of e the shaft it deflects in the opposite direction which is denoted by y. Now because of this opposite deflection of shaft there is dynamic force on the bearings right. Now what is the force on the bearings? It is equal to the resisting force of the shaft which is equal to Sy where S is the stiffness of the shaft. 
So from here we can find the formula that S is equal to M into omega N square. So we know the value of mass of the rotor and we know omega N. So we place the values and this is what we get S Y. So that means on bearings there is on the whole system basically the force that is acting is S Y. So for on both the bearings it will be S Y upon 2 and S Y upon 2. And because of the rotor also the weight of the rotor is also producing a the downward force so it is also exerting the load on the bearing so on the whole system it is mg in the downward direction so for each bearing it will be mg by 2 so the total load will be mg plus sy upon 2 so you place the values and this is the answer that we get